welcome to the tea table. So usually I'm not on the screen, but for this video, I figured I got to do a little explaining before we get to the deck list. So last night, I'm in my boy Gazer Beam's stream there. He opened in some Crown Zenith he picked up at an LGS down there where he lives. And I'm um, just vibing, listening, and then he says this. Uh, what is he doing? I'm just going for a morning stroll. I just like to walk around and just have a walk. And I like walking. Uh, wrong clip. Uh, this is this is what I meant. Yo, we got the Hatterene VMAX. Haven't seen this yet. This just is bad. Don't get it twisted. It is bad. So, you know, after seeing that, I had to build some Hatterene decks. Um, we're going to go over them shortly. I just want to talk about Hatterene real quick. So, the card, it's not it's not a Lugia. You know, it's no Lugia V-Star. I'm not going to pretend that one. Uh, but I think the card has a lot of cool things you could do with it. Today, I'm going to be covering it with uh, Arceus V-Star, Lucario from Brilliant Stars, and Zorark V-Star. So, going over those three deck lists. The card is really, really cool because it lets you, like, move the damage around. Um... To stop your opponent from being knocked out, it, it lets you uh, set up other knockouts easier with your attackers. You'll see in the deck list here, but it definitely is really cool for, like, if you're trying to tank. Um, so aside from those three cards, you could definitely play it with Mewtwo V Union if you want. Obviously heal there and move the damage, make it extra hard for your opponent to knock you out. You could put it in Gudra if you want to. Um, you could pick, like, a crazy style deck where you got, like, Mill tank or like Waylord B going on there to uh, just tank damage and move the damage away. Of course, you could do uh, many many things with it. And the best part is, as you'll see in one of the deck lists, you have Eternatus, uh, the Radiant Eternatus, where you can when you play it, you can just search for two Hatterings upon your bench. So the card is very versatile. There are many ways out there to play it, um, and we're going to go over a few of them right now. So I hope you do enjoy the rest of the video. And shout out to Gazer Beam. I will be linking his socials in the description of the video, and uh, enjoy these deck lists. All right, here we go. Jumping straight into this deck list. Our first one's going to be Arceus and Hatterene. So, the Arceus stuff is pretty explanatory. We'll get to that, but let's start with the Hatterene. Um, you got the Hatterene V. This is a new one from the Crown Zenith expansion. Horoscope, look at the top to guard your deck. You may attach any number of energy cards you find there to this Pokemon. It's fine. AD switch when you're bench. It exists. Then we got the Hatterene VMAX, like we did talk about. We'll go more in depth with it now that we have a picture. Ability Witch's Domain. Once on your turn, you may move up to two damage counters from your Pokemon to your opponent's active. And then GMAX Smite 150. They're confused. So the cool thing about Witch's Domain. Which you'll see highlighted more in a, one of the other deck lists is you can move it from different Pokemon. So obviously in this one you're probably going to move from your Arceus. But you can move it from other Pokemon. So if you have damage spread everywhere, um, you can move them and keep it, you know, do whatever you want. If you want to manipulate some damage and just keep it there and uh, heal other Pokemon and make sure you damage your opponent. So it is a really, really cool ability and I cannot wait. Uh, to get some games with it there and see what happens. So let's go to the rest of the Pokemon. We get the RCS V. Obviously, you get the Trinity Chart. Search through the basic energy attachment of your Pokemon V any way you like. You got that V Star. You got Trinity Nova. Same thing, but it does 200 damage. And you got that once again V Star power. During your turn, you may search your deck for any two cards. Put them in your hand. Then we got Dunsparce. We got the sick new Crown Zenith Dunsparce I was lucky enough to pull. Really great picture here. Um, one thing about Crown Zenith. Obviously, it's a major uh, reprint set to close out the block before we go to Scarlet and Violet. Appreciate the art. Make sure you appreciate the art. These Dunsparcers are just vibing. They're like, ah, we're protecting the little god of Pokemon, I guess. You know, no weakness. But they're very cool um, and great. So, it is in there because it gives you your RCS no weakness. We got Metacham V. This is a little cheeky on my part, but I wanted to play it. It's got Yoga Loop. Put two damage counters from one of your or onto one of your opponent's Pokemon. If that Pokemon is knocked out... You take another turn. You cannot stack them, so you cannot go meta champ and meta champ and meta champ, no matter what. But it does get you an extra turn. Um, I don't actually know if you need it. I haven't really done math on matchups. You might not need it at all. Realistically, I'm not sure, but I wanted to include it in a rough draft. So if you decide to take this for a run, meta champs kind of keep, keep it or leave it. it. Doesn't really matter. Our radiant, one of those in your deck, is going to be Gardevoir. Your Pokemon take 20 less from V's. Obviously, we're about tanking. 
So we're going to want to play uh, God of War to help us survive. And then we could heal with our Hatterene and live and stuff. And then we have Manaphy to protect our bench. I will say there is a trainer or Galarian gallery. Manaphy in the set. If you could pull it, it looks amazing. As well, look at that arc. Picky Peck. Um, fish, I don't know the name of. Pukamukus. It looks great. We got a uh, wishy-washy down there. It looks amazing. All right, so let's move on to the trainers here. We got the two escape up. I'll lead a switch. Guess which is Pokemon in and out. You never know. Sometimes you get a bad start. Sometimes your opponent has that last prize on the bench, and you need to get there. We got the three evolution instance. Obviously, your main Pokemon in the stack evolution, so you want to get that. We got one Fog Crystal, because not only can you get your Hatterene V, you can also grab your Psychic Energy, which is pretty clutch. Um, we got the two Hyper Potion. Heal 120 from one of your Pokemon that has damage. And discard two energy. But we do have double turbo. So that's really an easy boom. Get it on there. Heal. Move your damage to Hatterene. You can't knock me out. We got the four quick ball. Obviously get those basics. We got to switch. Same as escape rope. Got to get that active out of there. We'll have one ultra ball. Not a super important. Um, I think evolution is better. Because of what we're trying to do there. The Pokemon we might want to get with ultra ball. Obviously. Um, ultra ball is a good card. So if you want to play more. You play more. We got the training court. Four. That hyper potion you saw there. It's just great to get it back. Makes you discard. You only discard one to get it back. You're attacking. We got the two bosses order. You gotta switch your opponent's active and get those knockouts for the win there. You got a Sharon's Care. Another Galarian Gallery I was looking at. Beautiful art. Put one of your cost Pokemon. I guess you can pick up Dunsparce technically. Uh, back in your hand. And all cards attached to it. So you move the damage. You're still getting knocked out. You're like, you know what? I'm gonna pick it up. I'm gonna bring out another Arceus. That's fresh. And then get the clean up there we got the four money because you're going to disrupt we got the three research you still got to draw cards to get everything in there we got the two serena discard for three cards john say have five or switch one of those v's and take those prizes to win the game we got a big parasol as long as it's attached to your pokemon in the active spot prevent all types of attacks from your opponent's pokemon done all your pokemon so damage counters reg ice might not making your rcs attack special conditions you just put an umbrella um, I'm sorry, Parasol, you know, Arceus is Claw and it's vibing. We have the Choice Spell because sometimes you got to do more damage. Does 30 more to their Active V. Um, then we got a card that I think if you're going to play Hatterene, you should probably have this in your deck. Um, Leafy Camel Poncho, card I love. Card I love. Uh, one of my LGS uh, friends, Bryson, also loves this card. I set up a deck list um, like last week and he's like, is that a Leafy Camel Poncho right now? And then... He did not know how to gold, so you know he's in with that one. So what does this card do? It is a tool. Whenever your opponent plays a supporter from their hand, prevent all effects of that card done to the Pokemon V-Star or V-Max this card is attached to. So we can put it on the Arceus, but we want to really put it on our Hatterene so you don't have to worry about Reggie's bringing up. Boom. Reggie Gigas, 330, whatever, knockout. You just slap it on. They get the vacuum or they get the tool. You know, they got it. They got it. But it makes them work for it, and it's not just free, and it just lets you sit there kind of freely... Um, and move your damage counters and not have to worry about it. We have the four double turbo. Obviously power up. We have the one V guard. Um, the Pokemon that's attached takes 30 less from Vs. And then you got the six psychic. Energy in the deck. Oh, I'm so sorry. I skipped over the cool supporter. I skipped over it on purpose. Talk about the endless supporters. Let's right back around. We got an Agatha. Move up to three damage counters from your active to your opponent's active. So you got two of these. You got an Agatha. You're moving 70. You're getting knockouts. You're healing. You're hyper potion. Boom, I wanted. To, I thought about a Sus Food Tin, which is discarded Psychic Heal 80. That might be better um, than Hyper Potion, only for the fact you don't have to have the Dolt Turbo. So that's a thing to consider as well. Sorry about skipping the Agatha. I was like, oh yeah, it's a cool supporter in the end. And then I forgot it. But this is Arceus Hatterene. I mean, Arceus can go with whatever it wants. Um, like I said, Medicham might not be needed. Could try a Hyper Potion for Sus Food Tin. Who knows on that one. But let us move on to our second deck list of the video. Alright, our second list here is going to be Lucario from Brilliant Stars. So I used notice a couple things here. Trainers are mostly the same. Uh, let's kind of just go for their any deck. But you notice we have a 1-3 Hatterene line. And that is because we got the new 1 per deck, Radiant Eternatus, with the ability Climactic Gate. When you play this one from your hand onto your bench or your turn, search for two V-Maxes. Put them on your bench. Your turn's over. So, you get those... Hatterene's out, you're like, oh, I don't have to worry about evolving, especially because you only have one V. I did go one V anyway, because sometimes you don't get the Eternatus, and you still want to evolve. And, you know, get one Hatterene out, still good, even if it isn't two. So let's jump to the Pokemon here. We got a, a new Bidoof here, a world champion, getting a new card here. Carefree Countenance. As long as Pokemon's on your bench, for final damage to it, so uh, Radiant Greninja, Amazing Rare Raikou, get out of here. 
Then we got Babarel. Once on your turn, draw and take a five. I will say, boom. There's a Galarian Gallery Babarel. Just remember that. If you get him. Then we got Riolu, which has a Galarian Gallery as well. You can get that, but you won't evolve into your Lucario, which uh, has a Roaring Resolve. Once during your turn, you may put two damage cards on this Pokemon. If you do, search for Fighting Energy card and attach to this Pokemon shelf for your deck. And it is Aura Sphere Volley. Discard all fighting. 60 more for each one, so you're doing 130 by default, but you got a choice by 160. You got one to two Hatterings, hint for 200. You got a Grant, you're hint for 230. Uh, one or two shot in your V uh, V Max is really good with Lucario, so it can definitely put you in the lead there. Obviously, one prize is a little tricky, but you get two Lucarios, two Hatterings. You're using the abilities, putting 40, moving that 40 immediately to their active, and then hopefully knocking them out. We ran out of the Pokemon with that man of you to protect your bench as well. Then we got the Escape Rope. We got one Evolution Incense. We got one Sweet and Heavy Ball. Look at your face on prizes. You may reveal a base Pokemon you find there. Put it in your hand. And then shuffle the Heavy Ball into your prizes. Now, you don't have to. If you're like, oh, I got, you know, the Hatterene prize, but you already, you, you don't even turn this. You don't have to take nothing. You just discard the Heavy Ball. So, that is that. Uh, but it's really good because you need to get the Eternatus. You can just get it there if it's prize. You're not like, whoa, whoa, is me. Then we got the two Ordinary Rods. Really good, since you're going to be discarding your energy, and your Pokemon to really have a lot of HP. Shelf up to two Pokemon from a Discard Pile in your deck, and or shelf up to two basic energy cards from a Discard Pile in your deck. So obviously, helps you recover Lucario's, helps you get those energy back to use your ability. You got the four Quick Ball, you got the four Arch Ball, you want to get those Pokemon. You can do a 3-2 line with your Evolution Incense if you want. This was just preference to start out the testing, kind of went generic with the trainer. I don't mind to get Pokemon. But don't forget, discarding cards is fine because you got a barrel, so you could always draw to five. Then we got Temple of Sinnoh here. All special energy attached Pokemon, both these and your opponents. All right, Colossus and have no other effect. That'll be good. I mean, if your opponent can draw a stadium, and they're playing Mew. Fusion Strike Energy, crazy. I mean, they're playing Lugit. They got to put actually four energy on it, which is great for you because it means they use resources. Like, a lot of good. Your Arceus opponent can't get a turn one, you know, double turbo. What if they can't get a late game? You know, they can't attack. Really good. You can also use Trading Court, but I did go with the Sinnoh. Uh, that was just a me thing. Then we got the two bosses order. Gotta bring up those Pokemon knock them out. We got Galarian Gallery. Grant's here during this turn. You're fighting Pokemon. Does 30 more to your opponent's active, but has a really cool mechanic that I hope they just keep doing. Just bring other cards in the future. During your turn, if this Grant is in your discard pile, you may discard two cards except for any other Grant from your hand. If you do, you put this Grant into your hand so uh it helps you have a reusable 30 damage plus you got a barrel so you have to discard two cards it's fine you discard two play grant draw back up to five with a barrel we're rocking and rolling we're knocking them out got the four of marnie disrupt him you got a barrel you got the one research um he can do more than one but i want the one because got the barrel on also we have so many professors researches now Full Arts, uh, let me know in the comments below which one you like. I'll be honest, I like this one. This one might be growing. I like Professor Rowan. I'm Professor Rowan guy. Might be might be doing that one. Not sure in the future. Then we got a Raihan. Obviously helps you recover. You're not going to have a lot of HP. Attach your basic energy from your disc compile to one of your Pokemon and start trading card. So that can let you do basic um, Raihan attach ability. That's at least 190 plus your Hatterene ability plus your choice build. You're doing at least two, what, 40 there. So, definitely a really good card there. We got Serena. Discard with three cards. John to have five. Always good draw power. And then switch one of your opponent's bench fees with their active. Get those knockouts. So, we got the two air balloons to help you retreat. You know, pop on your Barbaro. Even Hatterene's got two. Um, but we really want to put a Hatterene, like I talked about on the deck list. Before this one, Leafy Camera Poncho. Especially with this one being one prizers. You just want to protect your... Hatterene's your opponent doesn't have like a, they have to work, if they don't play a way to get rid of it, they can't do the path to Lucario, Lucario, like random guy, Hatterene game. Then we got the two choice belts, obviously do 30 more to V's, and we round it out with the 10 fighting energy. So this is a Lucario deck, um, I think this might be the most fun of them, because Lucario's a fun card. I always like cards that do that, they're super cool, I like the way it works. Also you get to use Rain Eternatus, which is a new card people like. Um, so this one is probably the, might be the I don't know how good it is. I don't think it's better than the Arceus deck um, or the next deck, but it's definitely up there, and the ability to get your opponent with your one prize is always fun because I know we're always looking for those one prize. So that being said, let's move on to our third and final deck list of the video. And that deck list is going to be Zorog V-Star with Hattering. So we start with the 2-2 Hattering, obviously. 
But let's look at Zorog V. What what is what does the V and V star do? This one's got void return thirty switch with Winter Bench. That's pretty cool. It's got Shadow Cyclone moving energy from this Pokemon to Winter Bench Pokemon. Pretty cool. Probably not gonna use that. But it's got the V star here. Taking curse fifty times the amount uh, fifty damage for each of your Pokemon that's a damage. So you can have six. So three hundred two eighty with your Double Turbo, three times, twice, twelve. Who knows with Hatterene? We'll get more into the strategy of that in a second. It's got that sick V-Star power. Once again, discard your hand, draw seven. So he gets Zorak, draw seven. We're doing what we're doing. Um, Pretty cool. You know, just helps you get in there. So let's go around the rest of the Pokemon real quick. We got that Dunsparce for no weakness. We got that Crobat. When you play this card, draw have six. Pretty good. We got the Radiant Gardevoir. V's take 20 less. Um, We got Luminion V. Pulled this gorgeous new one. Oh my gosh, I thought the old one was it. Old one also very good. But this one, whoo! Sorry, I know I've been talking a lot about Crown Zeno. This fire with art here. When you play this card, search for supporters. So always good to just search out to be able to do anything. So, and then we got Gengar. Once a turn, if this Pokemon's on your discard pile, you may put it on your bench. If you do, put three damage counters on it. And it's attack, which we can use. Um, put two damage counters on your opponent's active for each of their bench. So you can put up to ten damage counters on it. So this combo, Gengar combos really, really well with Hatterene. So how does Hatterene fit into Zora? Well, um, the way we have damage here, we have Gate Job Bog here, which is a stadium where you have to put damage on your Pokemon um, when you bench them, or Gengar. So you put it on the bench, right? Your Pokemon only has to have one damage counter on it for Zorak's to, like, thing to work. So you got Gengar here, right? Or we got, we got, you know, we benched Gate Job Bog. We put 20 on two Pokemon. We use Hatterene. We remove 10 from each of those Pokemon to your opponent's active. We're automatically doing 21. Imagine if you get both out. You could make all your Pokemon have 10, because that's all that matters. And you're moving 40 damage over to them. And you're just going to be able to knock out anything. I think it's really cool. Especially Gengar, because Gengar puts 3 on itself, so you can automatically use it. Boom, and you're good to go. Even unless you do some one prize option with Gengar too, you're like, I'll move over. Tag with Gengar, save my V-Star. Uh, really cool. That's also why I don't have a Manaphy in the deck. So if you're playing against like Regis or something and it damages your bench, it's kind of like, okay, because you move the damage. Like you're just like, all right, I'm going to move. You're like, oh, I did 40 to Dunsparce for, you know, so Regirock. I'm going to use my two Hatterings and get rid of that 40. And it just kind of helps you go. And I think it's really cool. Combos really well with Zorak, actually. Um... It helps move the damage your opponent to help you get more knockouts. Uh, it's really cool. Um, we can't attack with it in this deck as we have a Raihan and stuff, but we'll get that in a second. I just think it works really well. I mean, ha being Gengar or Hatterene might be a deck at some point. Who knows? Put your Gengars on the bench, attack with them, move the damage. Who knows? Someone smarter than me will figure that one out. But that is where we're at on that one, so let's jump into those items. We got Damage Pump, another cool necessity for Zorak V-Star. Move up to two damage counters. From one of your Pokemon to your other Pokemon. So, it just helps you make Zorark do the damage. So, let's say you had to start with Zorark, Hatterene, um, and you didn't have Game Shop Box, so you couldn't damage the Hatterene, but you bench Pokemon next turn. Or you put the Gengar in play, you can move the damage. You know, all that stuff. It just helps you stay on track for what your damage is. We got that amazing Escape of both Switch. We got the Evolution Incense. Obviously, you got those Pokemon right there. We got Fire Crystal, which can get your Psychic or your Hatterene, which is pretty sweet. We got four Quick Ball and four Ultra Ball because you want to discard stuff like the Gengars and you just want to draw through your deck as fast as possible so that every turn you just have gas, gas, gas. Um, we got a Switch. Obviously, Switch is active. We got the Game Job Bog like I was talking about. Whenever either player puts a basic Pokemon from their hand on their bench, put your damage on the Pokemon. So imagine, like, all right, drop this, move 1-1, one, one, we're popping off. You got the one boss order. Bring up anything. You got the two Marnie Disruption and then get... Those two to three prizes, we got those four research, because all you're doing is drawn. We got a Raihan, obviously. So, you can attack um, with your Hatterene, but also it's like, if your Zora gets knocked out, and you still need to do more damage, and double turbo's not worth, you can attach a Psychic and search for your V-Guard or your Psychic Energy to attack, and save the double turbo, which is really cool. Usually Zora plays like four energy, my boy Kevin Kenny. You know, sometimes you just do four energy. Consistent there, but, you know, I'm wacky. So, it is what it is. Then we got Serena, discard for three cards. Could be some Gengars. Uh, John TF5. And then switch when your opponent's active Vs. Then we got the two choice spell. Do 30 more to Vs. We got those Ponchos, obviously, I told you. I mean, you can put a Poncho on a Zorg if you want, too, in this one. I mean, you know, multi, you know, thing there. Um, we got the four double turbo, obviously, because you attack for two colorless. You do 20 less. Just remember that. In your math, we got the three Psychics. And we got the one V-Guard. Your Pokemon takes 30 less from V. So, between Gardevoir and V-Guard, you can take a hit 
Then move damage off your Zorark to help you get a knockout on return. Like, even if they're already knocked out, at least it makes them maybe think about their turn. Um, in a couple practice games, I had, like, oh, I put them out of range for, like, Cramorant, right? So they had to figure out what to do. And, you know, just one of those things. Math. Math is hard, kids. Um, so this is the Zorog one. I think this one's super cool. I like this one the most. Arceus is probably the best. Um, from my four games I played with each deck, just because it's Arceus and you do whatever you want. This deck is actually close second. I really, I was impressed by it. I sent my buddy, like I said, Kevin, and he hit me with the, you'll hit me with that list. Um, so, Kevin, for watching, this is that list. Super cool. And um, the Lucario one is like, I'm taking it to Elite Challenge or Elite Cup, if you've played in those. That's what Lucario is. Well, yeah, F. F. F it. We're, we're getting some games in with it. You know, we'll get somebody. Um, so that being said, uh, one more Hatterene idea I want to throw out there. And this is another one of those 800 IQ, someone better than me can figure it out. Sable IV. Sable IV. I don't even know if I have Sable IV. Attack to 60 more for each. Damage can your opponent's active. So I don't know if there's like a, like a hit and run type deck. Um... You could do, or like, you know, something that could take a hit um, in the active spot. You know, I'm not sure. Um, what if I was put the Waylord in front like I was talking about for other decks, you know. I'm not sure on that one, but hopefully someone can figure that because Sableye's rotating soon and I love this card. I've always loved this card. You're just like, look at all the damage. You got Dark Patch. And the pieces are there. I'm not smart enough to figure that out. But with that being said, these were the three deck lists here. Arceus Hatterene, Lucario Hatterene, Zorak Hatterene. Let me know below which one you think is the coolest, um, or your Hatterene ideas. And I hope Gazer watched this video so he can see, while Hatterene is not the greatest card, it can definitely lead to some really, really cool strategies. And that's all you want to think about, man. You know, don't always judge a book by its cover. But with that being said, this is the tea table. That's about one that wears hats. I like hats. Like, subscribe. Thank you, everybody, for watching. And I'll see you next time on the tea table.